As the years go by, the more I realize that NASCAR Racers was one of the most random cartoons ever. It was created during NASCAR's peak years, but now, over 20 years later, I feel like it's barely remembered. The 90s were a special time for cartoons, and out of all of them, NASCAR Racers kinda got lost in the shuffle. Now that we're revisiting it years later, what was it, and what is the cartoon's legacy amongst NASCAR fans? While the cartoon was created by NASCAR, NASCAR, it was developed by the Edens brothers, Mark and Michael. They wrote for some of the greatest cartoons ever, which include Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the X-Men. Even though they grew up in Tennessee, they were never NASCAR fans. Even Michael attended races at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Once NASCAR flew them both out to a race and Mark got to see everything for the first time, it was his decision to make the show about NASCAR be in the distant future. Not only feeling it would lead to more interesting stories, lines, but also the toy cells would go through the roof if they had a cool looking design. Mark felt the problem with doing sports shows for kids is that you were competing with the actual thing. You had to come up with something over the top, as well as something that was going to compete against other cartoons and comic books. NASCAR agreed and gave their full support. According to Mark, he said the scripts were sent to NASCAR for approval, but they never rejected anything that was submitted. With five Fox signing a television deal with NASCAR, it made sense to have a cartoon run on their kids' network. Fox Kids Network was set to debut the cartoon in late November, with these promos airing on the channel. NASCAR Racers, the movie roars on Saturday morning, November 20th, only on Fox Kids. Before NASCAR Racers began its proper run in 2000, it premiered as a special three-part movie. Also, when the Cup Series race ran six days prior at Homestead, there were four schemes from the show that were ran. Bobby Labonte was the best of them all, leading 174 laps and ended up finishing second to his teammate Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon led three laps and ended with a 10th place finish, while Kenny Wallace finished a lap down in 15th, and Terry Labonte finished multiple laps down outside of the top 30. The race is on. Enter the Fox Kids NASCAR Racer Sweepstakes. Go, go, go. Win, and you and your team of three friends are off to the Coca-Cola 600 NASCAR race, VIP style, to meet a winner's circle driver. Roger that. Plus, win loads of NASCAR Racers toys and a NASCAR Racers simulator game. Whoa. 1,000 others win a NASCAR Racers toy. To enter, mail your name and address to Fox Kids NASCAR Racers P.O. Box 4040, Beverly Hills, California, 90213 by March 3rd. And remember, watch NASCAR racers on Fox Kids. With all of this talk of creating and promoting, I almost forgot to say what the cartoon was even about. What was the premise? While real life NASCAR tracks are mainly on ovals, NASCAR racers was anything but. The racers competed on a wide variety of courses, including road courses, off-roading, mountains, and a motor sphere. Instead of the Cup Series, it's called the Unlimited Series, with over-the-top technology that includes protecting drivers from crashes. Each race car had an inner rescue racer that ejected from the outer body if any accident happened. Most episodes had Team Fastex against Team Rexcor. Mark Charger McCutcheon was the main driver for Team Fastex. He was a third generation driver, which pays homage to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Megan Spitfire Fastler is the daughter of Jack Fastler, who owns Team Fastex and eventually becomes the team's second best driver despite her father disapproving of her career at first. Also, Charger has a crush on her too, so that makes for a much more interesting dynamic. Carlos Stunts Ray was a former motorcycle racing champion who joined NASCAR not only in it for the money, but to pay for research for his ill father's ongoing medical treatments. Steve Flyer Sharp was a fighter pilot in the Air Force years ago, but had to retire after being exposed to some type of nerve gas. He survived, but the nerve gas left him prone to sudden attacks of extreme nervousness, as well as shaking and sweating. He joined NASCAR to prove to himself that he could still handle the high pressure situations. Of course, you can't forget about the car owner Jack Fassler, crew chief Douglas Duck Danuka, and finally Lugnut. 
the team mechanic. For Team Rexcore, you had Lyle the Collector Owens, who was Charger's number one rival. The backstory is, they were both up for a ride at Team Fastex, and they went with Charger instead. Lyle settled into Rexcore and became the team's enemy, and after Lyle was fired from Rexcore at the end of Season 1, he was rehired early in Season 2 after he suffered a mutation due to contact with toxic waste, making him larger, stronger, and more aggressive than any human being on the racetrack. And how did you end up back with Team Rexcore? Oh, I showed Garner Rex that I was ready to compete at the next level. The team's owner, Gardner Rexton, is basically the mastermind of disasters for not only the team, but the entire series. The rest of the team's drivers include Hondo Specter Hines, who is considered one of the spookiest drivers in NASCAR, Zarina, who is a former model and bodybuilder turned race car driver, and finally, Diesel Junker Spitz. Diesel used to work on race cars in Europe while working security for a gang of thieves, but after getting banned racing overseas, he was taken on by Team Rexcore. Spex was the team's crew chief and a cyborg who used his special body of tools to repair any of the cars. And finally, you had Kent Demolisher Steel. Kent was an android designed for the destruction of Team Fastex. Let's get charged! Fox Kids invites you to experience the thrills! I'm losing it! Gotta bail! Of NASCAR Racing! The series premiere thunders your way Saturday morning, February 5th at 9.30, only on Fox Kids! While the first three episodes premiered as a movie special, really the first season began on February 5th, 2000, and ran until May 13th. Those were the first 13 episodes, and for season 2, there were 13 more, which aired from October 28th, 2000 to March 24th, 2001. NASCAR went all in with this cartoon, not only producing a toy line with Hasbro, the Rumble. NASCAR Racers! Racers come with driver, each sold separately. But even releasing the cartoon's own game for the PC and Game Boy. With all of the money and marketing efforts going into this at a time where the sport is at its peak, how come it didn't even last two years? The last episode aired on March 24th, 2001, which means the Cup Series race that took place that weekend was the Food City 500, which ran on March 25th. I think it all boils down to which channel the cartoon was airing on. By 2001, members of the Fox affiliate board had felt they were on a much more even footing with the big three networks and wanted to take back some of that time away from Fox Kids Network programming. Airing children's programming on Saturday mornings had become a liability as other networks started to extend their weekday morning news programs to weekends. Fox Family Worldwide was sold to the Walt Disney Company in July of 2001, but the sale was wasn't completed until October of 2001, and the group working on NASCAR Racers already had designed new concepts and storylines for Season 3. Unfortunately, these were never put into motion due to the uncertain future of the group, mostly because of the sale requiring full attention. In the end, NASCAR Racers officially got cancelled, and reruns were showed over the years on ABC Family and Jetix. While NASCAR Racers isn't going to be the most memorable cartoon by many, for NASCAR fans, we'll always look back on it fondly. It's a step back in time to when NASCAR was at its peak, when the sport was in demand everywhere, and also, it gave us one of the catchiest theme songs ever. If it were on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, I'm curious how far it could have gotten during the peak years. Perhaps if the sport reaches those heights again, maybe, just maybe, we can revive NASCAR racers. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.